Time for today's Choke Point brought to you by Online Trading Academy. And as we've been doing for the last couple of weeks, all things Viaduct. And today's not going to be any different. We've just got a very limited amount of time before the Viaduct closes for good. And we're into that three-week closure of the Highway 99 corridor through downtown. One thing I've gotten a lot of questions about is train service. What is Sound Transit going to do? What can they do to try to maybe improve service? And what can freight trains do or what will freight service look like? So I'm gonna start first with light rail. Light rail can be a pretty decent option for those of you looking for alternate ways to get into downtown, especially if you live into the, in the south end. And that's where I would recommend this as a potential option. Say you live in Pierce County. You can drive up I-5, drive half the way, and then maybe go to the Angle Lake parking lot or to the Tukwila parking lot on either side of the airport and catch light rail into downtown there, then catch the train back, then take your car south. Now, I've had a couple listeners try this over the last couple of days, and they didn't have such good luck. The reason they got there with as much time as they thought they needed, the lots were already full. And you're going to find that the case, unless you get there super early, you're going to find that that parking lot is full, either one of them. So that may not be the best option unless you're willing to get up two hours earlier and try to beat the regulars to their normal parking spots. But that is a possible option for you. Other people have asked me, are they going to add more trains or add more train cars? The answer, no. Sound Transit can't add any more train cars to their trains because they don't have any more. They're already using them all. The ones that they have ordered aren't going to get here until later this year for the expansion. So they're going to run as many three train cars as they can and they'll backfill with the two car trains when they can. They're going to run every six minutes during the normal hour, during peak hours and every 10 during regular hours. No service changes there yet. And they'll have a gap train, one that's not doing anything but at a moment's notice could be shoved to a different corridor to handle uh, the amount of congestion or demand at that particular time. As for Sounder, that's an option for you as well. They're not going to increase the number of trains or the number of runs, but if you go to MyNorthwest.com, look in the story that I did, I've got a ridership guide there that shows you which trains, what times a day, actually have some capacity traditionally. You might want to target those trains first. Now, the big question? What about all those freight trains? I drive through Soto every day, or now I'm going to have to drive through Soto. Am I going to get stuck by freight trains through downtown? Yes. Sound tra BNSF tells me, Burlington Northern Santa Fe, they are not changing their schedule. They're a 24-hour dependent, 24-7 operation. Freight's got to go where it's got to go. They're not going to change their schedule just because we might be in congestion. What BNSF tells me is they will try to reduce the number of crossings and the length of crossings that are there. So in other words, if you get stuck at Spokane, they're not gonna leave the train there for an extra amount of time. They're gonna try to clear those crossings as best they can and as fast as they can. They know what's going on, but unfortunately they just can't change their schedule. So the other thing, if you're gonna try these options, got a few days left this week, try it. Monday morning, you don't want to be the only guy who's never tried Sound Transit and you're at a station going, oh, hey, how's my Orca card work? Hey pal, can I pay with cash, what? and figure that out. Take a dry run. Trust me, you'll thank me later. And this choke point is brought to you by our friends at Online Trading Academy.